This is a short video on progressive neurocognitive disorders. We're going to be talking about six diseases that fit under this, under this progressive neurocognitive category. They are listed across the left here. They are Alzheimer's disease, Lewy body dementia, Pick's disease, vascular dementia, alcoholic dementia, and Creutzfeldt jakob disease. Now, these diseases are all kind of in the same group because they cause progressive impairment of intellectual function affecting multiple cognitive domains. And multiple cognitive domains kind of means that many parts of your intellectual function are affected. It could be like your speech, your memory, could be your executive function. There, there, there's a list of cognitive domains, and these diseases affect more than one of these cognitive domains. It's not just like memory loss. Diseases like Huntington's disease and perhaps Parkinson's are, are excluded from this list because those primarily have motor, uh, motor, motor disorders. Now, these progressive neurocognitive disorders are mainly intellectual function that has been impaired, although they might also have other manifestations throughout the body. We can divide these six diseases into two categories, degenerative diseases and non-degenerative diseases. Degenerative kind of means that they, they kind of occur with age. Uh, it's it's Non-degenerative does not mean that they're not progressive. Rather, it means that there was something that caused insult uh, to the brain that caused those diseases. Whether that is an infectious agent, perhaps a drug, or perhaps another uh, problem within the body. So let's start talking about Alzheimer's disease, first one on the list. Alzheimer's disease. It is the most common cause of dementia, most common of the six listed across the left. It's mostly sporadic, but there are some familiar variants, and, and there are people that know some, some genes associated with Alzheimer's dementia. Alzheimer's shows symmetric atrophy of the frontal, temporal, and parietal lobes. Uh, it's kind of important to remember that it's symmetric atrophy. It's not like one side of the brain is going to be affected, but both sides will be affected. The occipital lobe is usually spared. Alzheimer's can cause hydrocephalus ex vacuo. Now, hydrocephalus is an enlargement of the ventricles. As you can see in that image on the right there, the, the ventricles are enlarged. Uh, it's called hydrocephalus in vacuo because it's not enlarged as a result of high pressure in those ventricles. The, the ventricles are enlarged because the brain is atrophying. And as you can see in, in the difference between those pictures on the right there, if the brain matter gets smaller, the ventricles might appear larger. Alzheimer's presents with extracellular plaques on histology. These are shown in the bottom image. These plaques are called neuritic plaques or the slightly more offensive senile plaques. And these are made of beta amyloid protein, which is a protein that has been misfolded. You can kind of see it, get this pointer out. This is a beta amyloid neuritic plaque. These plaques can cause all kinds of problems uh, between the neurons, such as inhibiting their communication, and that's what leads to some of the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. So extracellular plaques are central amyloid. They're surrounded by dystrophic neuritic processes, neuritic processes that no longer work, that have been ruined by the neuritic plaques. Alzheimer's also shows intracellular plaques called neurofibrillary tangles, and these tangles are made of tau protein. So there's two accumulations of protein aggregates found in Alzheimer's, the extracellular beta amyloid plaques and the intracellular tau protein neurofibrillary tangles. These tangles of protein are polymerized and they are hyperphosphorylated. They kind of look like sticks in a neuron. They kind of look like a bundle of sticks that that kind of interferes with normal neuron function. Next, we're gonna be talking about Lewy body dementia, also called a DLB or dementia with Lewy bodies. This is the second most cause of dementia. Symptoms of Lewy body dementia are cognitive impairment, Parkinsonianism, hallucinations, and sleep disorders. Now, Lewy bodies are a histologic feature shown in the bottom right that are also present in Parkinson's disease. Uh, in Parkinson's disease specifically, they accumulate in the substantia nigra. In Lewy body dementia, they can accumulate in other parts of the brain as well. They can accumulate in the neocortex, the limbic system, and the brainstem. So similar to the Lewy bodies, actually it's kind of the same as the Lewy bodies found in Parkinson's disease, they're made of a protein called synuclein, uh, but it's a broader distribution. They're found throughout the body. And you can see a couple pictures of Lewy bodies in the histology on the bottom.
It's Lewy body dementia, kind of a Parkinson's disease that affects the rest of the brain and causes neurocognitive deficits. Next is Pick's disease, which is also called frontotemporal dementia. I actually prefer the name frontotemporal because it tells you which parts of the brain, which lobes of the brain are atrophying. This is an asymmetric atrophy of the brain, as opposed to Alzheimer's, which, as you might remember, is a symmetric atrophy. Alzheimer's affected the frontal, temporal, and the parietal lobe. Frontotemporal affects the frontal and temporal lobes. So there are a few key differences there worth knowing. So frontal temporal dementia spares the parietal lobe as well as the occipital lobe. Frontal temporal dementia presents with more prominent personality changes, including apathy, disinhibition, loss of emotional control. Patients might be found masturbating, might be found not going to work, might be found failing at work, might be found doing outrageous things that they normally wouldn't do, and they, they seem to just not care. It's often very difficult for the family uh, to see a person change like this, and it's kind of a relief to find that there is a medical reason for these personality changes. Frontotemporal dementia has an earlier onset, usually 40s, 50s, whereas dementia is mostly in 60s and, and older, and also has a faster progression than Alzheimer's disease. Frontotemporal dementia can, can become very serious within two to five years. That's, that's usually the course of the disease. The inclusions here are intracellular and they are spherical. They're also made of tau protein. Now remember that tau protein was found extracellular or intracellularly in Alzheimer's disease as well. They were called neurofibrillary tangles. Here, the tau protein accumulation is also intracellular in Pick's disease, and it's in a spherical inclusion. You can see the, uh, the atrophy of the brain in the frontal and temporal lobes in that bottom image there as well. On histology, you might also see ballooned neurons, which are bigger and kind of lighter colored with dissolution of chromatin. Next on this list is vascular dementia. Vascular dementia is essentially caused by cerebrovascular disease. You get multiple ischemic lesions. You have several infarctions. It's kind of like a bunch of mini strokes going on in the brain that cause dementia, that cause damage, which leads to dementia. Specifically, uh, causes dementia when it's when when these lesions, when these mini strokes affect the hippocampus and other areas involved with memory. This disease is slightly different because you might see a stepwise decline, where Alzheimer's or Pick's disease might be like a constant, steady decline. They're slightly worse every day. You don't really notice it. Here, you might see them be kind of normal for a couple months and then drop in function, drop in cognitive function, and then be normal for a little while longer, and then another sudden drop. And it's uh, and these drops, the stepwise decline, are presumed to be with each additional ischemic lesion. On radiology here, you can see infarctions. Uh, you can see like small strokes, maybe lacunar strokes might be going on there as well. It's important to note that in radiology, the absence of these infarctions rules out vascular dementia, but the presence of these infarctions does not necessarily confirm it. So if you don't have infarctions, you don't have vascular dementia, but just because you do have these multiple ischemic lesions doesn't mean that you do have vascular dementia. Treatment for this are to reduce the risk factors for these mini strokes, uh, so reduce hypertension, reduce hyperlipidemia, and maybe treat with anticoagulants, maybe some aspirin. Next is alcoholic dementia. Now we're not really sure if alcoholic dementia is directly, if alcohol directly causes a dementia, or if being an alcoholic and the behavior of alcoholics increases the risk of other causes of dementia. But nonetheless, alcoholics have a higher risk of dementia and brain atrophy. Lesions in alcoholic dementia include trauma. Um, alcoholics can fall, they can get chronic subdural hematomas, which, which undoubtedly causes damage to the brain. Increased risk of vascular disease as well. Often alcoholics have comorbidities of smoking and hypertension, um, can increase chances of getting vascular dementia, which was the previous slide, can increase your, your, uh, your chances of getting Alzheimer's as well, which is increased accumulation of those proteins, the tau protein and the beta amyloid found in Alzheimer's. Most notably, alcoholic dementia is associated with wernicke korsakoff syndrome, which is a disease related to thiamine deficiency that causes bilateral hemorrhage and necrosis of the mammillary bodies and other regions of the brain. Now, loss of the mammillary bodies in the brain can cause you to have amnesia, um, and wernicke korsakoff which is caused by thiamine deficiency, is often found in alcoholics. wernicke korsakoff presents with a triad of confusion, ophthalmoplegia, and gait ataxia. 
patients are confused. They, uh, they lost their memory. They might have retrograde and pterograde amnesia. They can no longer move their eyes as well. The ocular muscles aren't working. The ocular nerves uh, might be damaged. And gait ataxia, yeah, they have problems walking. So as I said, anterograde, retrograde amnesia, they also have confabulation, which is kind of interesting. The patients can be found lying or making up stories or making up situations or making up explanations and not really know that they're lying. They, uh, they, they kind of make up for the amnesia with, with making up stories, and yet they're not doing it intentionally. They're not intending to deceive. They're confabulating, uh, as, 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 and, that's, and that's a manifestation of Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. Now, Wernicke-Korsakoff is pretty easily treated with thymine because it is a thymine deficiency. Thymine is pretty cheap, and oftentimes when an alcoholic or other patient with uh, dementia comes in, they might be given thymine uh, in the ER just to see if that kind of fixes their symptoms um, because thymine is cheap and easy to administer with, with very few side effects. Lastly on this, uh, on this list is kreutzfeldt jakob disease, which is abbreviated CJD because it's hard to pronounce. This is the most common human prion disease. Now, as you might remember, prions are infectious particles made of proteins. These are kind of weird because they do not have nucleic acids like every other um, infectious agents that we know of. They are prions. Now, grossly, you see prominent cortical atrophy, uh, atrophy of the outer parts of the brain, kind of like we saw in Alzheimer's and Pick's disease. On histology, you see spongiform changes, which is shown in that picture on the right. The brain kind of becomes like a sponge. You kind of have these like missing areas of, of, uh, of in, in which neurons have been lost, in which brain tissue has been lost. You do also see amyloid plaques here and atrophic neurons. Now, there are a couple of classifications of CJD. The most common one, the one that's important to know, is sporadic CAG, which is associated with dementia, myoclonus, which is like a jerky muscle movement, and ataxia. There's also familial CAG, which has an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. VCJD, which is, the, which is a variant which comes from other animals. Um, mad cow disease um, that kind of spread to humans a few years back in the UK, I believe it started, was a variant CJD. Um, and this was obtained by eating contaminated meat products. And there's iatrogenic CJD, CJD caused by, uh, caused by physicians, caused in the hospital. And this can be a result of exposure to contaminated cadavers, to contaminated dural grafts, corneal transplants, and surgical instruments. Now it's worth knowing that CJD kind of kind of presents with really weird symptoms. The whole the, there is a there is like kind of an exaggeration with the mad cow disease, but the patients do present with kind of mad symptoms, doing things that you would that you would never really imagine possible, and that's kind of a tip off for CJD and for diagnosing CJD. This has been a review of progressive neurodegenerative disorders, and I hope it was helpful. Thank you for listening.